Iger's coming back into a problem, into chaos that he cannot simply undo. And the fact that he blindsided Chapek, because I 100% I believe that Bob Iger is behind all of this stuff, okay? You know, this article kind of says, well, you know, it's the board of directors or the board. Yeah, they're the ones that did it. Nah, 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 nah. Now, nah, nothing happens that clean anywhere, okay? especially in corporate America. And here it is. This is the chick right here. Uh, Christine McCarthy, Disney's chief financial officer, the CFO. You know, she got together with a couple of her homies, you know, members of the board. You know, they did the whole vote of no confidence in uh, Chancellor Valorum, except this time it's Chapek. You know, and she probably got Bob Iger on the phone. At least that's the story that they're spinning and said, hey, Bob, you know, remember that stuff we was talking about a couple of weeks back, you know, about getting Chapek out of here? I think now's the time to do that, right? You know, because at this point in time, man, I don't trust anything that any of these cats say. Iger never liked Chapek. These cats never liked Chapek. Says here that McCarthy was Iger's CFO before he departed as CEO in 2020, holding the role since 2015. She has an established relationship with the board, given her longevity in the position. The people say, see, when you take over as a boss, you the big dog, it's time to clean house. You got to get rid of the old regime. You got to get rid of people that ain't friendly to you. Okay, you got to wipe the board clean and start over. Because guess what? Dream Dan. Daniel to exit Disney as Bob Iger unwinds Chapek era structure. Yeah, see, that's what Bob Iger is doing, right? He's getting rid of the people that are going to be problems for him or his people down the line, right? Says, yeah, we're going to implement some organizational and operating changes. And one of the first people he got with of who? Reem Daniel, a top lieutenant for former Disney CEO Bob Chapek leaving the company amid the executive shakeup. See, what Iger's not going to do, see, Iger ain't going to have one of these little poison pills hanging around the company, right? This chick set this dude up and got him up out of there, set the whole thing in motion from inside, okay? Man, I'm telling you, man, this is some Game of Thrones level backstabbery, man. Unbelievable. But that's what happens in corporate America. Hey, you got to know who your friends and your enemies are, right? JPEG let this chick hang around and she was loyal to the soil, right? She's loyal to her dude, Iger. And Iger didn't like him. Man, I guarantee you, man, there were conversations happening all over the place in regards to this. How much time we going to get this dude to get up out of here, okay? Let's give him another few months, but then after that, we got to get him up out of here. Now, let me just say right off the bat that none of this crap is going to work, okay? You know, none of this stuff is going to work. Disney is going to be the same Disney that it was with or without JPEG, okay? JPEG wasn't the problem, all right? The problem is these cats are woke, and they don't want to admit that they're woke, but they are woke as the sun is shining, and they are basically running the company into the ground. I'm talking about the creators. I'm talking about the folks that's sitting up over Marvel like Kevin Feige, okay, Kathleen Kennedy over Star Wars. These are the people that are the problems, man. It has nothing to do with this guy right here. You know, Kareem Daniel and Bob Chapek, these are just fall guys, okay? Because check it out. This article talks about it. So as he's giving this dude Kareem Daniels his walking papers, he says here in a note to the uh, Disney Media and Entertainment Distribution, right? This is the department that Daniels headed up. I've asked Dana Walden, Alan Bergman, Jimmy Pataro, and Christine McCarthy, see how she's involved, okay, to work together on the design of a new structure that puts more decision making back in the hands of our creative teams. That's what he's going to do, okay? JPEG said, you know what? We need to have a different structure so that these particular creatives, they got to report to somebody before they just start rolling stuff out, okay? Now, it didn't stop the woke stuff from coming out, as you can see, all right? Woke stuff still coming out. But what he wanted to do is he wanted to kind of maybe put some kind of a buffer between the, these woke creatives and all the stuff that you got on television, right? And I guarantee you these creative teams don't like that, okay? Nobody likes a some dude just kind of looking over their shoulder. Hey, man, what you putting out there? And yeah, nah, I don't think that's going to work. You know, nobody likes that. OK, everybody wants to believe that. Hey, you know what? My upper brass, man, they trust me, man. They really believe in me. They think I know what I'm doing. OK, and I'm just going to operate free and clear of any kind of oversight or supervision. I'm just going to put out everything that I want. That's what these creatives want it okay and because they you know complained enough and bob chapek was not necessarily probably the coolest guy to work with they said well you know kareem daniel will be leaving the company and i hope you all join me in thanking him for as many years of service to disney hey, get the hell up out of here basically that's what he's saying in the nicest possible way 
It says, without question, elements of the DMED will remain, but I fundamentally believe that storytelling is what fuels this company and it belongs at the center of how we organize our businesses. Yes, he's absolutely correct that storytelling is the centerpiece of Disney, okay? Everything that you see at the parks came from a story, okay? All the merchandise, all the films, everything, that all starts with stories. You know, they're not making widgets or anything like that, okay? Disney is about creating stories and then selling those stories in multiple different types of ways, you know, from film, television, merch, songs, all kinds of stuff, right? That's what Disney's about. So, yes, you gotta get your storytelling right, but you would think that the first step, if you're trying to fix your storytelling, you would think, hey, how is our storytelling going right now? Like, are people loving and all, just, oh, we love all of the stuff that you guys are putting out. Disney, this is phenomenal stuff. This is great work. Is that the reaction from all the fans, the audiences out there with Disney? Hell no. So it, it, it just kind of boggles the mind. Like, what is he talking about? Yeah, storytelling is what fuels the company Bob Iger, okay? It's the same thing like Bob Chapek. But at the end of the day, nobody appreciates all the woke nonsense that you're throwing out and constantly feeding into the fan base, especially Star Wars and Marvel, okay? Now, I can't speak for Pixar, okay? I'm not a big Pixar guy. There's been a lot of stuff in the Pixar category as well that people are like, man, what the hell is this, okay? But overall, Disney has two major franchises where they should just be able to print money at this point. You got Marvel, you got Star Wars, you should just be able to print money and you can't. Why? Because your shit is terrible. You're too woke, okay? And nobody's buying it anymore. Storytelling, yeah. What the? What was the storytelling of Phase 4? Like, did people beloved? Is that the same kind of storytelling you got from Phases 1 through 3? No. But the thing is, they're going to double down on it. Here's why. Here's how I know they're going to double down on it. Look at the date of this article. September 9, 2019, right? Like Bob Chapek was nowhere around. He hadn't taken over yet. He didn't take over until February of 2020. All right. But already they're saying diversity is destroying Mother MCU. Marvel producer confirms it's the future. This chick, Trin Tran, right? An executive producer for Marvel. Here's what she said. Female representation, the diversity of it all is very important because of the world we live in. There's so many different people out there in order for us to celebrate them. We have to make movies that are different. We can't be always about one race or gender. That's not the way to connect with the world. Time out, time out. What about Disney princesses? Like, how come y'all haven't co-opted the Disney Princess franchise and thrown a whole bunch of dudes and males in there? Why haven't you done that? Well, I already know the answer is number one. You know dudes ain't guys. Little boys ain't going to get into Disney Princesses, okay? Unless they, you know, a certain kind of way. But they ain't getting into Disney Princesses, okay? They about football, monster trucks, and soccer, and all kinds of stuff like that. They could care less about Disney Princesses. But what they did like was comic books, okay? Comic book characters, that stuff has always been primarily male, male driven, okay? And the funny thing is I was listening to a podcast or either a podcast or a streaming, uh, somebody streaming, I'm not sure which one it was. I've been listening to this stuff all day, but they were talking about like, yeah, the Disney princess line, that was for the girls, okay? Bob Iger was the one that kind of facilitated that and he said, that's my jam, that's what I do, okay? I sell toys to little girls, okay? But Disney has never really had like this strong, powerful boy market where they just, we can sell anything to boys. Along comes Marvel and Star Wars. For the boys, right? For the guys. That's a guy franchise, boy franchises, all the way, right? Geeks and nerds. That's who loved Star Wars. That's who loved comic books. And what did they decide to do? Oh, well, you know, we can't always be about one race or gender. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> it's like you had something for the girls, okay? That the girls dug and enjoyed, and everybody was cool with it. And you never tried to co-opt it and steal it away from them. And now, no, we got to make this all inclusive. You never tried to do that. You've had Disney princesses for years. You understood what you were doing. You understood who your market was, who your fan base was, what they're interested in. You understood that. But for some reason, they don't get it when it comes to comic books and it comes tomorrow. They got to come in here. Nope, we got to take that too. Bob Iger ain't changing nothing, okay? Bob Iger ain't changing a damn thing because this all this stuff originally came under his watch.
Okay, this is where they were going with it from the very beginning. And what's interesting, this person says, I'm, I've said this before, only comic book fans will realize the changes are for the worst and will be disappointed and upset. Nah, <laughs> the general audience has already checked out, okay? You can see it by the diminishing returns of the, of the three MCU films that dropped this year, okay? There's no pandemic you can blame on this or anything, right? You did great numbers with Spider-Man No Way Home, right? Okay, but so far the three films that have come out this year, Doctor Strange, Thor, Black Panther, diminishing returns across the board, okay? Not what you expected. You expected a bunch of billion dollar films, you didn't get anywhere near that. That tells me that the fan base, the general audiences, they're not going back to see your films multiple times. And again, I still say that the main reason is because the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has shot its wide. It's done, okay? Ended in Endgame. Everybody was like, Endgame is the perfect place to end it. And I think most of the general audience has checked out. They see Marvel stuff out there. Yeah, we might check it out. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Okay, they can see some of this stuff on Disney Plus, And the stuff on Disney Plus has been trashed. So why would they invest money to go to the theaters, okay? And again, all of that stuff that came under Disney Plus, that's still Bob Iger. Even though Disney Plus was mostly in the Bob Chapek era, it's still Bob Iger's stuff, okay? Because all of these projects were well under their way before Bob Chapek ever became CEO, all right? So I don't think nothing's going to change. I think they're just finding scapegoats, people to blame. Ultimately, again, like I said, Disney... <laughs> is irredeemable they're not going to save this they can say the company is fine okay but i'm talking about from a content perspective they're not going to turn the corner on this all right what they're eventually going to have to do is what i said what i was talking about what elon musk did with twitter is just flush this turd down the toilet clean the decks okay and start over anyway folks what do you think about this situation man but nothing's going to change i'm just letting you know nothing is going to change and this whole game of thrones takeover it isn't going to matter okay it's not going to amount to a hill of beans because at the end of the day the same guy that started it is the same guy that's back in it now Nothing's going to change. Anyway, let, let me know what you think. Go ahead, drop down, give me your thoughts and your opinions in the comments. And thanks for watching. See you next time.